Sip my tiger news all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Migrant demands, worst doctor times two, a little bit of family feud, and going to Gaza? <laughs> Thursday, people, what do we got cracking today? Well, a group of migrants sent a list of demands to the Denver mayor. So what's going on? A group of migrants staying at an encampment in Denver sent a list of demands to the mayor's desk. That group said if their demands are met, they will voluntarily stay in city-funded shelters and leave their encampment where families, including young children, still live in tents. Okay, you do what we say, and we'll go ahead and do what you ask. So, are they in a position to demand anything? They absolutely not is the answer. They're going ahead and they're living under a bridge and the city is like, you can't do that. It's not good. It's not safe. It's a bunch of problems. So, go into the shelters. And they're like, no, we have a list of demands you must meet. The camp as a collective came up with a list of demands. Uh, this morning, they sent us buses to take people over without presenting that documents and without having any kind of signature for accountability. That is how the city responded instead of meeting their demands. Oh, goodness. We've been offering time and shelter, basically just trying to get families to leave that camp and come inside. Which comes within three square meals a day. You can cook your own if you like to. Sounds great. Well, why are they denying it? Migrants who stay in shelters are often put on a path toward a work permit. Reeves said that migrants at the encampment have not received the same benefits. They're not receiving any kind of official housing or immigration document support which is incredibly necessary for them to be able to navigate the bureaucracy around these systems. What do you qualify for? What do you not qualify for? What might be something that is feasible path for your success that is not staying on the streets of Denver? We try to compromise. We try to figure something out. You know, at the end of the day, what we do not want is families on the streets. So what are the demands? Migrants will cook their own food with fresh, culturally appropriate ingredients provided by the city. Instead of pre-made meals, rice, chicken, flour, oil, butter, tomatoes, onions, etc. Also, people will not be punished for bringing in and eating outside food. Shower access will be available without time limits and can be accessed whenever we are not in the military. We're civilians. Medical professional visits will happen regularly and referrals, connections for specialty care will be made as needed. All will receive the same housing support that has been offered to others. They cannot kick people out in 30 days without something stable established. There needs to be clear, just process before exiting someone for any reason, including verbal and written and final warnings. All shelter residents will receive connection to employment support, including work permit applications for those who qualify. Consultations for each person family with a free immigration lawyer must be arranged to discuss progress, their cases, and then the city will provide ongoing legal support in the form of immigration document clinics and including transportation to relevant court dates. The city will provide privacy for families, individuals within the shelter. No more verbal or physical or mental abuse will be permitted from the staff, including no sheriff sleeping inside and monitoring 24-7. We are not criminals and won't be treated as such. Yeah, you are. You totally entered the country illegally, seeking asylum the incorrect way. No separating families, regardless of if family members have children or not, the camp will stay together. I agree with that one. You shouldn't be separating the families, especially kids from their parents. That's absolutely incorrect. The city must schedule a meeting with the mayor and those directly involved in running the newcomer program ASAP to discuss further improvements and ways to support migrants. The city must provide all residents with a document signed by the city official in English and in Spanish and all those demands that include a number to call to report mistreatment. So, Come into the country and uh, be like, hey, everything you guys are doing for us, it's not good enough. We're not listening to what you guys are offering. We want this. And uh, yeah, you should give it to us because we are citizens, which is absolute dog pile. You know, like you come into the country, you're like legally you're meant to seek asylum in any countries you cross through before coming to America. You know, Mexico, for instance. Well, what if they're coming from Mexico? Well, then you don't get to seek asylum. You don't get to stay here and do whatever you want while you're waiting to get paperwork done and demand anything. You don't have any rights as an illegal 
migrant or an illegal alien or an undocumented, whatever it is. What you've done is entered a foreign land illegally crossing the border and now you're demanding all this stuff and the liberals in the government are just balking at it instead of saying like you know okay well let's get this under control let's hold the president and Mayorkas accountable for allowing all these people to come in and flood the system nah let's actually just give them more than what we're giving our citizens that's like six thousand dollars a month okay Way more than what veterans are getting. They're getting hotel stay, food, stipends, like $80 a day. It works out to like six grand a day, uh, a month. It's unbelievable. Anyway, get out of here, okay? With that. All right. Colin Rugg uh, from Twitter, always bringing the hot juicy beef. He has a new story here. This is horrific coming out of Belgium. 14-year-old girl lured into a forest in Belgium by her boyfriend who then allowed 10 children to ambush and gang rape her. Police say their rapists aged between 11 and 16 year olds were young people of immigrant origin. What's that mean? A migrant group of people let their kids run loose without understanding the laws of the new country. And probably a lot of these Muslims feel like if you're not Muslim, then you're beneath them and they get to do whatever they want. And they teach their kids that. So there you go. What's up? The accused rapist filmed the attack and posted it on social media. The incident took place in Kortrijk, West Flanders, about five miles from the French border. The girl was reportedly in the forest for two days, was raped, abused, and tormented. Six of the suspects have been placed in closed institution and four were placed under house arrest. The youngest suspect is 11 years old. The suspects have all been identified and arrested and measures have been taken by the juvenile court. Our attention is now going First and foremost to the victim, she is receiving counseling, said West Flemish Public Prosecutor's Office. Horrific. Yeah, so that's what you're inviting into the country, people. People that uh, don't share the same values or culture as you or the same religion. And, oh yeah, but they need help. Like, they're just seeking the American dream, you know, like, or the European dream, whatever. Well, they come into your country, your town, your city, and they look around and they say, these people are wrong. We should have Sharia law. We are higher uh, than these people. You're talking about white supremacy. Well, this is Muslim supremacy. That's what people need to start talking about because Muslims believe that they're superior than everyone. Jews do as well. They believe they're the chosen people of God. So there's a level of superiority to that. And Muslims hate Jews. Why? Because Muslims feel like they're superior. And they feel like Jews are inferior. So they're always at odds. And guess what? It's all bull. Okay? No one's superior than anyone. We're all just humans. But some people take advantage. They take over. What's going on in Russia? Russia claims detained American climbed into a kid's library and undressed. He must have thought there was a drag show going on or something. American citizen William Russell Nikum has been detained in Moscow, Russia. He's accused of breaking into a children's library and undressing himself. In accordance with the protocol on an administrative offense, a U.S. citizen drank alcoholic beverages, then was found in the yard naked, expressed obvious disrespect for society, citizens, and public order, for which he was detained by police officers, according to a Moscow court. Good job, Russia. That's what you should do. When someone enters your country and doesn't follow um, societal rules, no respect for citizens or public order, boom, lock them up. Good. The U.S. Embassy says it was aware of the reports that U.S. citizen has been detained in Russia and takes seriously our commitment to assist U.S. citizens abroad and provide all appropriate consular assistance. The embassy refused to offer any comment on the case beyond this due to privacy considerations. Okay, so news of Nikum's detention comes as another American citizen, Staff Sergeant Gordon Black, was detained in the Russian Far East. Black stationed in South Korea traveled to Vladivostok without authorization reportedly to meet a woman he was romantically involved with. He was arrested after allegedly attacking and robbing her. Yikes. Uh, Representative Michael McCall, Republican of Texas, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, suggested Staff Sergeant Black could be a hostage. Aaron... Gershkovich, detained since 2023, has been described in similar terms. Donald Trump has blamed the situation on Joe Biden's ineptitude and weakness and vowed he will secure Gershkov's release when he is re-elected. Yeah, so uh, is it retaliation or are these Americans absolutely disrespectful? Don't know. 
We'll keep you posted. Supreme Court poised to enter debate over transgender care for minors. Okay, let's get it written into law. Trans rights are human rights. Yeah, well, human rights are human rights. And you have the right to shelter, water. I mean, internet's become like a right. So what's the deal? Do you have the right to do whatever you want to your body? Body autonomy? Maybe. After steering clear of the divisive issues for months, the Supreme Court may be on the verge of deciding whether to jump into the national debate over medical treatment for transgender youths. As soon as Thursday, justices may vote behind closed doors on whether to grant an appeal that seeks to block a new Tennessee law prohibiting medical treatments that enable a minor to identify with or live as a purported identity inconsistent with the minor's sex at birth. Okay, so, yeah, block it. Because kids shouldn't be allowed to do things. That's why historically they can't smoke cigarettes, they can't buy whiskey, they can't get a job, they can't vote, they can't join the military. Why? Because they're children and they don't have capacity for their own agency to make correct decisions. So chopping and lopping is probably not the best idea for a kid to do because when he grows up and he's like, yeah, I'd like to reverse this as I was told. And they're like, <clears throat> uh, sorry, doesn't look like we can, but we'll work on it for you. They have been in no hurry to act, however, it's possible that they will put off the issue again. For weeks, they have been repeatedly delayed a vote on the case, likely reflecting a division, either between liberals and conservatives, or perhaps inside the conservative majority. Some 24 conservative states have passed restrictions on treatment for transgender youth, potentially affecting about 114,000 minors. Oh my god, the smallest percentage, like 0.01% of the population, not even. Uh, yeah. What, they're going to go kill themselves? Well, guess what? It doesn't even matter. Once they've gone through these surgeries, they're still mental. Leon health e. <laughs> Yeah, they're still mentally unhealthy. And guess what? Most of them do commit suicide after that anyway. It doesn't matter. But most kids grow out of this stuff. So if you don't keep laying it on thick and saying, you got a problem, you need to work on your problem, your problems, your problems, your problems, then they'll get over it. They'll grow up. They'll do something different. The court turns down Tennessee Peel and says nothing more. It could signal that the treatment bans for transgender youth are likely to take effect in about half of the nation. Then the map of states would largely match the red state, blue state divide on abortion. Yeah, absolutely. Because most conservatives believe that uh, if you're going to go out, you should take responsibility for your actions, like having sex unprotected and getting pregnant. Yeah, guess what? Now you have a baby. Should have been taught about that. Parents should have did a better job. School maybe should have did a better job, you know? Maybe get people to learn how to take care of kids and be like, oh, geez, I shouldn't have sex because I could end up with a baby for 18 years. Responsibility. Costs about a million dollars to raise a kid. So that's your house there, people. Anyway, whatever. Disgraced New York City urologist convicted of sick abuse, including using sex toys on patients. What the heck? So a urologist. Is that a butt doctor? No, that's a penis doctor. A disgraced Manhattan urologist was convicted Wednesday for sexually assaulting patients, including six boys, under the guise of medical treatment. Darius Paduch, or Paduch, 55, was found guilty by a jury Wednesday in Manhattan Federal Court on all 13 counts he faced related to his sexual abuse of eight patients, according to the Manhattan U.S. Attorney's Office. Paduch, who formerly worked at the New York Presbyterian Wheel Cornell Medical Center and Northwell Health, carried out the abuse from 2015 to 2019 when he was alone with his patients in the exam room. Prosecutors have said it's an image of the individual. Looks like a normal guy. The doctor who specialized in infertility and male reproductive health would allegedly instruct his victims to masturbate themselves or he would masturbate them himself. He also used sex toys on them and carried out unnecessary rectal exams without wearing gloves. The feds have claimed. As unanimous jury has just found, Darius A. Paddock leveraged his position of trust as a medical doctor for his own perverse gratification, Manhattan U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said in a statement. For years, patients seeking needed medical care, many of them children, left his office as victims. Paddock is also being sued for more than 130 of his former patients in a slew of cases for alleged sexual abuse, for allegedly sexually torturing patients with unnecessary medical procedures conducted without anesthesia so he can inflict pain on them. So he's a sadomasochist. Mallory Allen, a lawyer representing his victim, said in a statement that justice was served today. For nearly 20 years, patients who trusted him for their medical care and treatment were instead brutalized by his degrading, sexually violating, and medically unfounded acts while the hospitals were he worked looked the other way. The jury verdict in the case confirms 
sorry, affirms that these heinous acts will not be overlooked. Yeah, super duper creepy jerk doctor just getting his jollies from ch raping children, basically. And there's sick people all over the world. That's why you should always be careful. And never trust anybody, ever. Believe half of what you see and none of what you hear, okay? Mega creep doctor. They're everywhere, so be careful. Just because they're a doctor doesn't mean they're a good person. Just because they're a police doesn't mean they're a good person. Just because they're a teacher doesn't mean they're a good person. Just because they're a priest. Any people in authority, these monsters seek those roles so they can take advantage. Because humans seek their own advantage, usually. We got a little bit of a family feud here. Not the game show, but a gun show. Kentucky woman goes on shooting rampage, kills husband, sister, before dying in a shootout with her brother. Good lord. What's going on here in Kentucky? Well, she went on a wild shooting rampage, killing her husband, gunning down sister before she was killed by her brother in a shootout, police said. Angela Gosser, 56, is accused of driving to her brother's house on Friday, May 3rd, in Jamestown with a gun and forcing her way into the home. Her brother, Daryl Wilson, 58, was home at the time, and according to a press release from Kentucky State Police, he had a gun too. Police said the two siblings got into a shootout that ended with Gosser dead. Wilson was injured and taken to a hospital with life-threatening injuries, but the extent of Gosser's crime spree, according to police, only became apparent when authorities were called to her sister Jennifer Wilson's home for a welfare check. Jennifer Wilson's family said they weren't able to get in touch with her and were concerned for her safety. Certainly after hearing the stories of this crazy lady going on a gun, out, gun shootout, when authorities arrived at the home in Russell County, they made a grisly discovery. Troopers and deputies found Jennifer Wilson sitting in the driver's seat of a Toyota Camry with apparent fatal gunshot wounds to the head. Police said they believe that before the incident at her brother's house, Gosser came across Jennifer Wilson and shot her multiple times through her car's passenger side, leaving her for dead. According to the Lexington Herald leader, Gosser's husband, Larry Gosser, was also found shot and killed on Friday evening. Larry Gosser was a retired sergeant with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife after 16 years of service, according to Wilson Funeral Home Records. God rest his soul. We'll pray for you, sir. Larry. Police told local station YK, sorry, WKYT that Larry Gosser was working on a tree on his property in western Pulaski County when his wife opened fire on him, killing him. Right now, that is open for investigation. We're still working with detectives, looking for leads. They're back there working to find the end of it. So yeah, we don't really know exactly what was going on. Perhaps uh, the husband and sister were uh, messing about. Perhaps they ripped her off. Maybe they treated her terribly for a long time. We don't know the motives yet, but as soon as we find out, we will let you know. College anti-Israel agitators could be sent to Gaza under new House GOP bill. I'm going to bet that these pro-Hamas supporters wouldn't last a day, but let's give them the opportunity, said Rep. Randy Weber. Okay, what's going on here? New House Republican bill would send any person charged and convicted for illegal activity on a college campus to Gaza for at least six months. Well, wow. Representative Andy Ogles, Rep, uh, Republican of Tennessee, introduced the bill on Wednesday alongside Reps Randy Weber and Jeff Duncan in response to ongoing anti-Israel demonstrations on college campuses across the country. Several of those protests have turned violent, with clashes between police and activists, as well as hundreds of activists being arrested across multiple campuses. While Agos bill text does not mention Israel or the anti-Israel groups, it specifically targets unlawful activity on college campuses after October 7, 2023, when Hamas militants invaded Israel in a surprise attack that killed over a thousand people. Lest we forget, that's what started all of this. Those convicted would be forced to serve a minimum six-month community service sentence in Gaza, where Israel is currently waging a brutal campaign to eradicate Hamas and rescue the remaining Israelis that terrorists took hostage in October. Yeah, remember that. They went in to a music festival dressed in civilian clothes, parachuted in, murdered thousands of people, children, women raped, hostages taken. Oh, but yeah, we must protect Palestine and their terrorist government. Yeah, I love this bill. Go ahead, send them over there and see how they feel. Because most of these liberals, they can't even handle, like... Anyway, we won't go there. They can't handle it. Students have abandoned their class to harass other students and disrupt campus-wide activities, including university commencement ceremonies nationwide. Enough is enough. That's why I introduced legislation to send any person convicted of unlawful activity on the campus of an American university since October 7, 2023 to Gaza to complete a minimum six months of community service. Yeah, so this probably won't get very far... Uh, if you support a terrorist organization and participate in unlawful activity on campus, you should get a taste of your own medicine. I'm going to bet that these pro mass supporters wouldn't last a day. Well, let's give them the opportunity. Whatever, buddy. It's not going to happen. But I love it. Good for you. All right, people. 
That's the news for today. Like and subscribe. Mask comes off at 10,000 likes or subs. We are at about 1,800 likes now. Summer's around the corner. Let's heat this up because it's getting hot in here. We need this mask off so you can see this beautiful mug. Sigma Tugger, signing out.